Welcome to Golden Black Live, our Friday, October, I had to look at the calendar, October 4th edition. I want to thank our sponsors, State Farm Agent Trent Johnson at TrentIsMyAgent.com, and of course, Triple X on the Hill, uh, but on the level, a Purdue tradition since 1929, Tom Deanhart, mm. about to make his way up to Madison, Wisconsin, where Purdue will take on the Badgers tomorrow at mm. noon, game covered uh, on the Big Ten Network. And of course, uh, Purdue has not won there. You've, we've talked about this to we're blue in the face since 2003. A lot of moving parts to this one because uh, not only does Purdue have a new offensive quarter, coordinator, uh, but also Wisconsin has a key player. Miss it, it sounds like he's going to be missing opting out as of Thursday night. Put this all in a in a neat package for us, Tom. What do you what are you seeing come uh, Camp Randall time at noon tomorrow, our time, 11 o'clock uh, local time when the Boilermakers and Badgers square off? Well, for sure, Alan. Before I leave, I could go for a triple X breakfast special. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Dwayne <laughs> Purvis, All-American, um, to fuel me up for that four or five-hour trip north. But what can we expect? Yeah, two desperate teams, Alan. Again, with anybody watching this knows the desperation that settled in in West Lafayette, the three-game losing streak, um, just a – you know, the one and three star, just the, just the general malaise that seems to envelop the program and and what directions are going. The questions pour out of pour out of your head as fast as they come sometimes, at least for me. And then Wisconsin's lost two games in a row too, Al, and they lost to Alabama and USC, two pretty tough foes. Uh, they're trying to get their ship right. Of course, you talked about their, their number one quarterback, Tyler Van Dyke's out for the year. Got hurt against Bama. They, they've been playing a backup a kid from Mississippi State. We talked about Shea Malusi, the running back, who's opting out. Um, injuries. You know, Luke Fickle uh, wanted to tighten the, the rotation at running back, I'm told. They're playing too many guys, he thinks. And, and I think Shea was sort of the, the guy, the odd man out, so to speak, Alan. So I think there was some hurt feelings here as, as the impressions I get. So he's a leading rusher, but he's not going to play. One less worry for Purdue. And, yeah, I don't know. Well, I guess the big storyline, not to get too, be too long-winded here, but the big storyline – from West Lafayette is the new offensive coordinator. Sure. And will it make a difference? That That's what we all want to know. Jason Simmons, you know, we, we've discussed it on the site, written, written stories, posts on the message boards, plenty of posts on the message boards. Everybody's got their opinion, right? That's the beauty of Knucklehead Central, right? Uh, but again, how, how how's this offense going to look? What can Jason Simmons realistically do, Alan, walking in midstream? So it's going to be interesting to see maybe what tweaks – and in modifications he can make to try to, try to breathe some life in an offense, Alan, that's going to combine 38 points the last three games. Yeah, it's uh, hard, to, hard to fathom that that's where the Boilermakers have been. You know, it's like the old uh, baseball analogy, I guess. You know, you're changing managers in the middle of the year, hoping for a spark, hoping for yeah. a bump, hoping for something to happen. I mean, this was an offense, and you had uh, talked about this in the offseason or leading into this season – we thought could be a real strength of this team. It just hasn't worked out that way. Uh, mm -hmm. One would think that uh, if you're going to win, finally break that uh, 17 game streak at Wisconsin, that you're going to have to uh, figure out a way to score enough points. That's a simple thing, but yeah. that's been a really disappointment for this year. Is just that offense for a number of reasons just hasn't mm -hmm. uh, hasn't gotten out of out of uh, first gear. Yeah, you know the defense has its share of issues, but I think. Sure. It has bowed its back and shown some some fortitude and some fight the last two weeks at Oregon State and last week at home against Nebraska. Got some stops, got the ball back to the Purdue offense. Seemingly time and again, the Purdue offense could do nothing with the ball. And I, Alan, too, the, the offense, to me, has those two major issues. Uh, one being they can't stay on the field. They're, they're, they're not good on third downs. Number two, the passing game, the cradle of quarterback. There's no air in this passing game. There's no explosive plays in the passing game. Purdue's among the, the worst in the Big Ten when it comes to pass plays of 10 yards or more. So they've, they've got to try to find a way to stay on the field and get some more out of their passing game, especially some big plays. I think, Alan, you know, I think sadly that you, you got to lean on what you can do offensively, and that's run the football. And I think maybe we'll see a little bit more Devin Mockaby. If he, if he can't get going, Alan pretty probably has no shot. If they can't run the ball. I don't want to oversimplify things, but I'm going to. I think you got to run the ball with Devin. And um, and that obviously opens things up for you. And I'll be interested to see the one guy that Jason Simmons has to find a way to, to get more production out of is Hudson Card. 
Um, we all think he's better than what we've seen, right, the last three games. I think he is. Um, can he do some things structurally within the scheme, roll him out, get the ball out of his hands quicker? You know, the quick slants, the quick outs, um, the extended handoffs, if you will. Uh, even the design runs, Alan. He's a good athlete. So yeah. I think there's more there that has not been tapped into as far as what Hudson Carr can do. That's the guy Jason Simmons has really got to try to find a way to make more effective. And uh, the wide receiving core, let's be honest. I think we need to see more. The the Where's the explosion? Where's the, where are the big play guys there? I will say this, Alan Carpick. I think there's a very good chance Jamal Edwin's going to play. Of course, he's the kid uh, that FAU transfer missed last year. Actually got hurt in the opener against Indiana State, his name. Fought through it against Notre Dame, missed the last two games. I think I think there's a good chance he's going to play, which will be a nice boon to this wideout core. Yeah, you know, we saw in the Indiana State game, I think what the first two or three plays yeah. uh, went right to him. I mean, he is a big play, big Big target, I should mm -hmm. say, and maybe a guy that you can have confidence in. That just seems to be what's missing. Uh, I mean, I don't know if it's as simple as Hudson Card not having confidence in his in his receivers because he's also they can't protect him or they haven't been able yeah. to protect him at the level, uh, the offensive line that needs to happen. But we, you know, I, I don't think Hudson Card forgot how to play football. You know, he he is a guy that the last. Uh, third of the season last year after he got relatively healthy uh, showed some real signs of being a big 10 level prep quarterback and we talked openly about him being in the upper third of the big 10 quarterback certainly coming yeah. back to to 2024 uh, it just hasn't worked out but uh, he is a guy you know you talked to him this week a guy that's got pride in what he what he does he knows that his guy that that brought him here had a lot to do with him coming here Graham Harrell is gone that's the reality of college football these days. But uh, you have to think his mindset, uh, if he's determined, uh, may maybe he can make a make a major step forward and really help this offense get going. Yeah, you're right. Um, Hudson understands the business of college football. And uh, he always struck me as a, as a team guy, just, just a good person. Yeah. Obviously a good football, but, but a, good, a good guy who comes from a good family, kind of guy you'd want your daughter to, to date. Yeah. And uh, not to get off on a tangent here, but yeah. – it's just a good person, and he like you can see he's a group for guys like Hudson Card. So let's see what happens here. And Allen, something else that's been a that's invaded Purdue that they always are pining for offensively, that fast start. Yeah, get a lead, and we saw it a couple of times. Oregon State in particular, they were handing the ball in the red zone after a fourth down stop, and they turned the ball over with that botched exchange with Maccabi and, and Card. They can't ever seem like to get get a lead. I think Allen. We were in the press box last week. Mike Carmen made the point. At one point, Purdue took, took a, what, a 3 nothing lead, I think. That was the first time Purdue had led against an FBS foe all year. Yeah. And, of course, that lead did not last long. So trying to get off to a good lead, I guess I'm saying that because you talked about confidence, yeah. uh, the lack of confidence. And I think, obviously, a good start for any team is going to give you some confidence and a lift. So that's going to be important, too. What's this crowd going to be like Saturday? You know what it's like up there in Madison. Um, and, and a nice start could at least get pretty some confidence and maybe mute what can be a pretty rowdy Camp Randall Stadium crowd usually. You know, it's interesting. though, at 11 o'clock start local time. They'll You'll see a lot of empty seats yeah. until <laughs> the students wake up and get there. Yeah. Uh, they'll get there in time for jump around. I, we, uh, I did, uh, you know, that's what the 26-year tradition Purdue uh, Purdue. Uh, Wisconsin in 1998 star was the first time that that had come come about. Of course, the third quarter, end of third quarter tradition that we'll see at Wisconsin. The Badgers also, I mean, they've got, they, you know, there's some concern. You know, I, I think one thing for Purdue, maybe, maybe uh, the fact that you get out of Dodge, you know, there's a lot of doubt right now in the Purdue football program mm -hmm. where it's going. Is it headed towards a one and eleven season right now? If you had the odds makers out there, you're probably not a favorite in any game, any remaining game as it sits today. But Wisconsin's in the same. You know, they they hire Luke Fickle a couple of years ago. They change their change a little bit. They yeah. they go to some of the air raid principles. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet, and he was obviously a guy that was able to take Cincinnati to the college football playoff. He did a great job there, but. Uh, the bloom may be a little bit off the rose right now in year two for for Badger fans, and this is this is why this is a critical game for both teams. Yeah, you're right. Um, hasn't gone swimmingly for Luke Fickle. Uh, had that charm life at Cincinnati, got them in the college football playoff, and 
you're right. His, his big bold stroke was to hire Phil Longo, from North Carolina, to be the OC. And you talked about the air raid principles. Uh, Purdue fans, that that rings familiar to their ears, <laughs> and uh, hasn't hasn't just hasn't really taken off. There. And again, that's a program that for years, people watching this know the years and, and the tradition of that Wisconsin offense. And and when you say Wisconsin, what you immediately think of, Alan, offensively you think of offensive line is like a monolith. Six yeah. foot seven guys and and physical backs and they're gonna pound you, and efficient quarterbacks as well. And so yeah, that's and and, and they they've strayed away from that. Uh, they can run the ball effectively, but again, they want to they want to do some other things offensively with the pass game. And that's been that's met with some a critical eye. It's it's gonna gonna be the case when you go seven and six last year, Allen. And you're two and two this year, and you reference their schedule, man. You know, it's uh, and then they've got some heavy lifting left, just like Purdue. They still have to play Penn State, Iowa, Oregon, Nebraska, and they have to go to Rutgers. I think after they play Purdue, so they they they've got uh some some big uh some big games in front of them as well. And this this I was talking to the writer, Jake Kokorowski from the Wisconsin State Journal, and he he dubbed this a must win game for Wisconsin because of that schedule. You know, they think they got to take care of Purdue at home, right? And, uh, and there's that urgency at Purdue, like you said, Alan. Is this going to be a 1-11 and season? You and I remember, I, I saw a lot of the games in 1993 when Purdue went 1-10 that yeah. year. And under Jim Coletto in his third year, I never thought I'd see a one win season at Purdue, but we did. I Certainly nobody wants that for Purdue at this point, but you're right. It's going to be tough, my friend. They have the game at home against Northwestern, maybe. That would be a game Purdue's a slight favorite. But again, at Wisconsin, at Illinois, at Michigan State, at Indiana. And now they still have to play the three best teams in the Big Ten. They still have to play Ohio State, Oregon, and Penn State. You know, this is a team that's one in three. And if you lose four more, you know, obviously bowl eligibility is out the window. People kind of made cracks at me on the message board for even mentioning bowls anymore. But I guess as long as it's still a possibility, I'll mention it, right? Yeah. Well, and, and 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 it is. This game is so much about identity and what te- what two teams, uh, you know, Wisconsin is searching for whatever it wants to be, yeah. and and uh, Purdue very much the same same way. All right, how do you see this one playing out? You only have a prediction on the site here, a yeah. little bit, but a little bit an hour from now. But how do you give us a sneak preview of what to, what do you think this is going to happen? What's going to happen on Saturday afternoon in Madison? Yeah, like you said, two programs who are searching for an offensive identity, and that's not a good thing when it's October 4th, right? No doubt. Uh, so you got to go with Wisconsin. I mean, um, until proven otherwise, I'm going to be skeptical of, of, of what this Purdue program is capable of doing, especially offensively. Uh, <clears throat> I'll believe it when I see it, right, Alan? I think Wisconsin's a double-digit favorite. I think they'll, they'll probably find a way in the end. To, to probably cover, I think, about a 13-point favorite at this point. So, yeah, I mean, um, you know, er, early on, things are promising, but I think um, as the weeks have gone by, I, I've, become a less, I've become less and less uh, heartened as, as maybe what this program is capable of. And, and uh, not that history matters, but there's, then there's the matter of the 70-game winning streak, too. And yeah, that's got to be in the float in the back of everybody's mind is there flying up there uh, for that game. So, yeah, Alan, I think the Badgers will take care of business. I think the Badgers will cover. Um, we'll see. I think we, we spoke off camera or, or maybe at, at another point this week about how we can never know what to expect week to week in college football. So who knows? Maybe this is one of those zany Saturdays where the, it'd be one of those tremendous storylines. The high school, uh, oh, I should say the accidental offensive coordinator with 23 years of high school experience Help, helps orchestrate a, a revived Purdue offense to a stunning upset of Wisconsin and, and Camp Randall State. And maybe we'll see a headline and a lead of, of that ilk written uh, come, come late afternoon on Saturday. Who knows? All right. Hope springs eternal for Purdue fans. Uh, you have to hope, yeah. One win seasons in 1993 and 2013. Uh, not what you want to repeat. But again, uh, they still have, the Boilermakers still have eight games to play, and we can look ahead. They got to look at the next play, and if if they can do that, who knows? Uh, I'm with you. I don't see it happening, but uh, I've been wrong more than I've been right when I'm trying to predict college football. All right, Tom, safe travels up there. Enjoy your night's stay in Janesville before you ro- roll into mm-hmm. Madison, 
uh, one of the great venues in college football. And uh, we'll look forward to that. All right. Segment two will be Rob Hummel. We'll get had a chance to speak with Rob. That's uh, uh, always going to be interesting. And then, of course, Jim Russell will join us in segment three. Who is Jim Russell? Jim Russell, Tom Dienhart knows, press box announcer. He has been that. This is his 50th season uh, and uh, has seen a lot, seen a lot of characters come through the all the old Robert Woodworth press box to the Shively Pavilion. And we'll look forward to talking to Jim as well. So stay tuned. We'll be back in two minutes on Golden Black Live.